One of the more interesting movies to come out of 2019 was The Lighthouse, a surreal psychological horror movie about a pair of lighthouse keepers slowly descending into madness and alcohol abuse when they're trapped together during a violent storm. It's basically like every Christmas in Scotland ever. In an endless sea of safe, corporatized, big budget, homogenous sludge, it was a breath of fresh air to watch a movie that dared to be weird, abstract and thought provoking. So I was pretty excited when I found out that director Robert Eggers was going to be turning his attention to Vikings with his next movie, The Northman, a historical epic about an exiled prince on a quest for revenge against the uncle who murdered his father and stole his kingdom. I went into it expecting your typical hack and slash action adventure story, lots of blood and gore and beards, big epic battles and a final climactic showdown to decide the fate of a kingdom. And well, that's not exactly what this movie is. You might say it subverted my expectations, except it did it in a good way, not the kind of way that makes me want to tear my own fucking face off. <laughs> The Northman tells the story of Amleth, a warrior prince whose father gets betrayed and brutally murdered by his uncle Fjolnir so that he can claim the kingdom and Amleth's mother for his own. Amleth himself manages to escape the ambush and swears an oath of revenge against Fjolnir. Flash forward about 20 years and Amleth's now a big sweaty berserker with an epic beard going on a rampage across Russia. Because, you know, what else are you going to do? It's here that he runs into a holy woman and has a mad spiritual vision reminding him of the oath that he took as a boy. Now he's a man and apparently it's his destiny to seek out Fjolnir, recover an ancient sword that was lost long ago and lay a good old fashioned smackdown on him. Wait a minute, an exiled warrior prince going on an epic quest to take revenge against the man who murdered his father and claim his birthright? Where have I seen this before? Grom. Seriously though, this is the point where the film takes your expectations and gleefully does a big steaming viking shit all over them. Instead of ruling over his father's kingdom, Fjolnir has now been exiled to Iceland where he presides over a small village and a handful of soldiers. And before you know it, Amleth's infiltrated the village posing as a captured slave where he begins a campaign of sabotage, psychological warfare and brutal murder, slowly eroding Fjolnir's power and stripping away everything the man values. Along the way, he also hooks up with fellow slave Olga, who's pretty happy to help him out, in more ways than one. <laughs> but is his quest as righteous as he believes? Is Fjolnir really the evil traitor that he remembers from 20 years earlier, or a loving father manipulated into doing something he didn't want to? Is Amleth bound to the fate that's been prescribed for him, or can he escape from it to become something more? And if he follows his quest for revenge all the way to its end, will he be any better than the man he swore vengeance against? These are the questions that lie at the core of the Northman's story, and as you gradually discover over the course of the film, the answers are usually complex, morally grey and extremely fucking violent. Make no mistake, this is a harsh, unforgiven world inhabited by harsh, unforgiven people. Death can come suddenly and violently, and innocence and goodness offers no protection from it. The movie also plays with the idea that our childhood understanding of people and events is often dangerously unreliable, distorted and simplified by a lifetime of new experiences and personal biases, and usually lacking the context needed for proper understanding. Amleth himself learns some pretty sobering truths about his mother and father that reframe past events from a whole different perspective. I mean, it's not a particularly complex plot, and it's definitely not some epic saga of heroes and villains clashing with the fate of their kingdom hanging in the balance. This this is a gritty, grounded story about personal grudges with morally complex people that you could choose to view as good or evil depending on your point of view. But one thing it is, is gripping and compelling. I was never bored throughout The Northman, partly because the streamlined story allows for greater focus on the characters and the world they live in, and partly because of the remarkable direction and cinematography. Robert Eggers brought a unique visual style to The Lighthouse that reminded me of classic vintage movies from the 1950s, combined with a shit ton of surreal dreams sequences, visions and hallucinations that were very much left up to the audience to interpret, and he brings a lot of that same style to the Northman. It's not quite as abstract and weird this time around, but there's plenty of moments where you're left to question whether what you're seeing is metaphorical or literal, which is an arty farty way of saying that the main character has a bunch of spiritual visions, and the film never makes it entirely clear how much of it is real and how much of it is just in his heads. 
Either way, the Northman is visually brilliant to look at. Norse culture seems to be going through a bit of a renaissance right now, with big budget TV shows, video games and movies all trying to put their spin on this weird combination of complex spiritual mythology, advanced culture and brutal gory warfare. Now I don't claim to be an expert on this stuff by any means, but I spoke to Andre from Midnight's Edge, and he reckons the depiction of Norse culture, weapons, rituals and language is pretty fucking accurate. And since he's basically a fucking viking himself, what are you gonna do? You gonna argue with him? I mean, there's no strong black women commanding hordes of viking warriors, which I'm sure must be pretty infuriating for some people today, but what can you do? That's historical accuracy for you. On that subject, you'll be pleased to know that there's absolutely no attempt to push THE MESSAGE with this movie. There's no overpowered female warriors that can somehow hold their own against men twice their size and weight, no ethnically diverse token characters awkwardly forced into historical situations where they never existed, and no clumsy commentary on present day social issues. It's a movie that wants to do one thing, tell a good fucking story, faithfully and accurately. Imagine that. Performances are excellent for the most part. Alexander Skarsgård is perfect as Amleth, a big hulk and warrior filled with rage and vengeance, but struggling to look past that and find something more. Ethan Hawke absolutely dominates every scene that he's in, despite his modest screen time. Anya Taylor-Joy looks weird, but in a good way, like you can totally believe this is a girl from some far-flung Siberian tribe, and I'm not entirely convinced that she isn't some kind of fucking space alien in real life. Speaking of aliens inhabiting human bodies, I love the fact that Bjork's in this film. Nicole Kidman's a bit of a weird choice though. I mean, damn, she certainly swings for the fences with her performance at times, but unlike most of the cast, she doesn't really look like she belongs in this world. The lack of makeup means that you can tell she's had a lot of work done recently, and I don't know man, there's times when her face just doesn't seem to be willing to move in the way she needs it to. Overall though, The Northman might not have been the film I was expecting, but in a lot of ways, it's the film I needed right now. At a time when cinema's dominated by endless big budget, low imagination superhero shitfests, it's nice to see films that dare to be different, creative, unconventional and thought provoking. Films like The Northman remind me that cinema can and should be an art form made by people with actual artistic visions instead of a fucking conveyor belt producing forgettable, formulaic content designed purely to make a return on investment. It's a film that kept me gripped and intrigued and left me with a lot to think about once it was over, and if you're in the mood for something a bit different and more challenging than the usual shite, then well, I recommend you give it a go. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.